Riverside One, Block F, Crop Cucumber, Variety Ashley by Stark Airs, sowing date the 2nd of September. We first introduced you to this crop back in the middle of August, and at that stage we were still talking about land preparation, getting the beds ready. A lot has happened in the 10 weeks since then, and on this video we're going to bring you up to date with everything. We're talking about sowing, we're talking about liming, we're talking about crop protection, and of course we're talking about these crucifixes that you see, trellising. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Mondo Farms channel. So good to have you back with us again here as we continue taking a look at the way we grow vegetables on our farm on the outskirts of Chongwe. My name is Chisha Folotia and our farm is called Winterthorn. Mostly we grow onions, that's been our primary crop. But this time of year, we also grow fruiting veg and one of the main fruiting veggies cucumber. Now, in the first update, we talked about how we we're going to prepare the um, beds and how we did the fertility trenching. And on today's video, we're going to share with you the next few weeks. We've got 10 weeks to cover, so there's quite a lot to go through. So after the ground prep had been done and the beds were ready, it was now time to put the seed into the ground. And on our farm, when we're doing cucumber, we will do direct sowing. Mmm, I hear some of you say, I thought cucumber was supposed to be transplanted. Yes, some people do that. In fact, the very first crop of cucumber we did when we just started the farm back in 2020 was transplants, which we brought in. Then later on, we went somewhere and on one of the farm visits and we were told by one of the farmers and shown that it was quite okay to do direct planting of cucumber. So when we did our second crop, uh, the one in at Riverside 4 last year, we did direct seeding and it worked. So that's how we came in and we planted A, B, C, these three blocks here. Now, sadly, for whatever reason, we don't seem to have any footage of the day that the seed was being sown. Yes, Commission of Inquiry has been set up and we get, shall get to the bottom of that mystery. But anyway, the seed was sown, right? And what happens when seed is sown? You start watering it, and after a few days, you get germination. This variety is uh, Ashley from uh, Stackers. You can see germination coming up so well. Yeah. Um, you can see here, these were planted diagonally. So there's one here, one there, then one here, then one is supposed to come up from here, then uh, one here too, then another one there, then you've got this one. Yeah, beautiful. Coming up. <laughs> okay, see this guy here breaking the ground. The coat of the cucumber seed. That guy there. Then we have our beloved soya beans which was here, which is now a weed uh, for cucumbers. The only one cucumber now. There it is. Then we've got the Wondways. As weeds, the Amaranthas. So 
Alpha. So good. So good. When the germination started, we really started to see that it was a little bit sporadic. It wasn't the best of germination. And as every farmer knows, no germination, no crop. No crop, no harvest. You might as well take your money and bury it straight into the ground. But we didn't come here to lose money, right? Now we've all heard the stories about people coming from towns like we came from Lusaka to Chongwe, putting in a lot of time and effort into a farming venture and then after a couple of years giving up and saying there's no money in farming there's no money in farming yes there is but it's going to be quite hard and you've got to put a lot of time and effort and be really 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 resilient you've also got to use every tool available speaking of tools speaking of tools one of the tools that we had is a couple of years ago on Amazon, I bought one of these multimeters and the multimeter is able to measure soil moisture and something else. And of course, soil pH. So here's Tyson confirming what we kind of already knew that the soil was quite acidic and that was causing a problem with the germination because acidic soils are not good for germination. Uh, so we are here at Riverside 1, uh, Block D, there's E and F where we have our cucumber plants. And now uh, with me here is a 4-in-1 soil survey instrument. So it gets to measure your pH, your moisture and other parameters. So here to test for our soil pH uh, for this block here. So it says 6.5, and of which you need to uh, make sure that your, your soils are within range for the crop that you've planted. You don't want to have uh, uh, too, uh, too much acid in your soils and too much alkaline in your soils for your plants. So here it has gone down to 6. 6, we move now to the next point. Here, as I've removed, put it out, it has gone back to the neutral, which is 7. So when I put it there, it's reading 6.5 and 6.0. Okay, there it goes down to 5.5. Which is not good for the crop that we've planted here, the cucumbers, the kirky beets. Let's come back to 5.5. So it started with 6.5 right down to 5.5 it's gone down to 5.0 so there is need that we come in again and drench with uh, micronized lime so that we provide uh, a good and safe environment for our for our plants cucumbers so having seen that we had acidic soil, one of the things you do when you've got acidic soil is you apply lime. Lime has come a long way over the last decades, right? It's not that old powdered lime that uh, you know people used to use. Nowadays, you have companies like ETG giving you a wonderful product called Micronized Lime. Teacher drenching, drenching a lime on my cucumber using a cane.
So here we are with poor, relatively poor germination, but there's more to the story. The plot thickens. So here's the deal. When we were planting, we bought the seeds. We bought X amount of seeds that we had calculated would be enough. For whatever reason, these things happen in farming. It actually wasn't enough for us to plant two, two seeds in every single hole. So, but we managed to do that in those beds in block F and block E. But when it came to block D behind me, we didn't have enough for that. Now it's Saturday lunchtime, and that's when we find the seeds again. We can't go back to Starkers, they don't operate on a Saturday. Um, did we buy the seeds from somewhere else? We looked at the relative costs of buying, you know, those little 25 gram packs that are available in many of the retailers. Ah, they were just not cost effective compared to the 100 gram tins that we had bought from stocks from Stark Airs. So we decided it's okay, just plant Mawan one in here. And that came to be interesting later because when we ended up with the poor germination, now we didn't have enough crops in here, enough plants in this block to make it worthwhile, all the effort and everything. So we decided let's transplant the, the little crops that were in here and let's take them and fill in the gaps that we were having over in block E and block F. And that's exactly what happened. Chair transplanting cucumber. I chose a block D. But I read Tamo E. So E, the Faka Mosema Gapsi. Meta cities are E. Then can I go F? So now our crop is pretty much, you know, in the ground and we've got about as much crop establishment, plant establishment as we're going to get. And we start looking after it. Looking after it means that you've got to feed it and you've got to protect it. Crop husbandry, as we always say on here. Ah, that means things like insecticides to protect them against the insects that want to eat you. That means fungicides to protect them against the diseases that want to inflict themselves onto our little babies. Tipo Riverside One, Block E, displaying agrochem, chemical, nimside, extra mixed in our penophos. And it also means feeding. At this stage, the crop is establishing, right? All that really matters is that the roots and the health of this of the crop itself. So a lot of the, 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 the fertilizers that we add at this stage are the ones with phosphorus, what we generally term basal fertilizers. So you see the teams spraying some of the some of the basal fertilizers like Voema starter. So in a couple of days, these will be a month old. And so far, they're doing well. Yes. We plant double. Yes, we do. Uh, which comes back to the issue of uh, advantages and disadvantages of OPVs. OPV. So, so the seed is cheap, so which means we can plant double. Remember when we were doing our calculations and we found that trying to plant double with a hybrid was extremely expensive. Very, very expensive. Double yeah. the cost anyway. So that then it's not necessary with a hybrid. Yeah. But with an OPV, you kind of do it to, um, to, to, to hedge your losses. Increase the chances of germination. Cucumber is a vine. In its natural state, maybe thousands of years ago, before humans started messing with it, it would just grow along the ground. And of course, if you grow it, it will, will grow along the ground. But in the commercial farming, proper modern farming state, we actually want to pull it up and make it grow upwards. Why do we want to do that? A number of advantages. 
One of the advantages is that when it's growing upwards like this, you then get more photosynthesis and you get more increased surface area. I'm using my hand as a prop and you can just imagine all the beautiful sun rays hitting this one, this one, this one. Whereas if it's on the ground, it only hits the top here. And that's why we do this thing of lifting them up using systems like these that you're seeing here called trellising. The other main advantage is when you pull it up like that, it reduces the disease load. The diseases, funguses love a moist, dark place. You know, the kind of place that you would find like a Quasimodo? Yeah, funguses really like that. So when we do this, we kind of like open it up and it does decrease the disease load quite a bit. Hold on. Fungi? Funguses? Fungus? Funguses, okay, fungi, you know what I mean, right? Number three advantage, it makes harvesting really easy. So crops like these, Ashley variety of cucumber, we always trellis. And that was the main thing that we then had to start doing. While the crop is still in its vegetative state, there's a lot of debate as to when you should start trellising. But we start trellising and start making the trellising poles at this stage. I'm also glad to see the trellising is underway now. Yes. So... It's a big hole. It's uh, 50 centimeters going down. So we'll, we are, uh, are getting ready with uh, the trellising poles that we'll, we'll come and put in here. Then they are spaced at uh, two meters per, per, per half, one after the other, the next pole. So that you don't have the, the lagging in terms of uh, trellising when we uh, trellis the plants, they don't uh, sag down. So this is the stage, the time when the team moves in and they start making the holes that are going to be able to hold up these big poles. And you can basically see how the trellising system works here, is that you've got a big pole in the ground. It's very stable, very steady. Look at that. If I hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And this guy is basically holding up this barbed wire along here. Here's this barbed wire, evidence that it is barbed wire. And barbed wire costs more money than normal wire. Why do we use barbed wire? Because we don't want these strings to be slipping and sliding. My farming journey has been very interesting over the last couple of years. And you pick up little bits and pieces of knowledge and experience all over the place. YouTube, like this video you're watching, is a wonderful place for learning things. So I think it was a video by my good friend, Mr. Panuka, one of the Panuka Farms videos where he talked about it, um, you know, the advantage of using uh, barbed wire because then you don't get this, the rope slipping. So getting back to the story, look, you have to be able to plant all of these poles and make a lot of holes in the ground. So putting up the trellising poles is one of those things that takes a while. Quite a lot of work that needs to be done to dig all these holes. The spacing we have here is about every three meters or so. And then you've got, of course, the support brackets that need to go in to hold up the poles so it doesn't fall. The digging of the holes is something that's usually done by the, the male team and it takes them quite a while especially when they're still using old school methods like this. Take riverside one, block E. Take a mirror my hose, your fakama. Pause the adjoint that really see. So my forty job, forty centimeter. Me go to get the pass. They don't must step on me. In my men, in my two point five, eh? Yes, very old school. Doing that kind of thing was going to take quite a long time. But you know us. We are Mondo Farms, Mondo Farms. We're always buying all sorts of modern tools and stuff. And one of the things that we had bought some time ago to help the guys when it comes to making holes like this is augers. 
And so here we had to now remind the team that you guys, most of us could even have my my tools. I mean, you can get it and easy. Could you tie in cheat or it's like fast? But Petrus, he don't yaku no, he soft. Why is he saying this? I will get beat. Come on, I'm going in. Let's see that, but we don't want. Ah, eh. So, apa ni? I'm going to move on. Let's just go. But <laughs> 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 Mae si dabui sana, hae ni mwaku zampo ni biyo nse Watenga na china nko Oga bits, hae ni fast He Pagina Yes sana, patienti shite kompea mwatenga mamine ya ngati ukumba vaja Mwetani, mwetani pegi, pegi Pegi wakina Paka pepa siri Mwetani pegi wakina Mwetani pegi wakina Mwetani pegi wakina Mwetani pegi wakina Mwetani Pima anuko Bali soft Kumiala eh kangena kukakwana si mwameni So ena mwamzambi na shito ufiki dako Uchasa machito entua chapansi Matuzi ya machini ni sani Yema at machini ni chintu chechima kwa isa nchito easy Ndiye hii Ehe Mwenye mula hapa. Iyo 40 cm kapea ni 45 ya mfuna ya. Awita. Sinabla nizire ya hapia. Awende. Sebe mafika patari hapa. Finyasi. Iyo tuli na ayo hapo ya. Sopo. Hmm? Ii. Isebe nza. Hapa tipe ya hapo. Tipe ya hapo. Tomo manzi umu Tafakamo kusmini Chaira mafango Mutengo vese mfiu udivi Swa ba tafakamo na Tafakamo na watu Watu doyo Tupaya tumastok bora zoom Tafakamo boti So finias Tika ngenesa mwita ngenesa Sila kumamba na wako Then ya patenga ya javi Tuma brushes to pentele Tenga manzi, tita, ita ishukuti manzi Angene mtuma hozi umu Hapa eko jani Hapa eko tu doyo Kwetu soki nga maningi Soki nga nga liyatae mwa kutinyansu Kwa mekwenzo ngena mtuwe tuku Suti ya meti uzi nga niya jenze mapepas Nika mba ya Niya jenze mapepas ya Uh, so we are here at uh, Riverside 1, uh, this is block F, E and uh, D, so in block F and E we have our, our cucumber plants cropped that have really grown and uh, looked amazing. We are now preparing uh, trellising pods that should be here um, tomorrow. They'll start coming in tomorrow. 
and be uh, put up. One other challenge we are facing here is uh, uh, the weed pressure, of which we have to uh, bring some guys here. Our ladies are, are busy with uh, other works, um, the onions, but we we'll bring in the guys that will come and uh, do some uh, light reading or pruning of uh, these weeds. But generally, um, the cucumber plants themselves, they look okay. And these are the holes for for the trellising poles. Oh, this other one, this is when it's germinating. You can see this, it's cold. Sitting on my pose. River view to Peleka River side one, Mama Cucumber. So I'm going to palace. They will boil up a set in manj. I mean, it's when the DP. If we get to work, we can take a project to make a set in the same level. Riverside one. Ah, so here at uh, Riverside one, block EF, where we are putting a uh, trellising pot so uh, E is done now we're on to F to power riverside one block E F Tifa Kama Posi Posi you're tracing cucumber. So I put it as set up. Not my kid, to do it. No, So 
so we're here at Riverside One where we have our cucumber crops and uh, we're doing uh, scouting and checking what's happening to the to the plants in terms of how they're progressing growth. <laughs> then we just observed that we have uh, a thrips infestation in here. Yep, we do have a thrips infestation. Then uh, what we're gonna do is uh, look at what we have in stock in terms of uh, our agro chems. <laughs> then uh, deal with the little tiny guys. So, what has worked best for for thrips getting rid of thrips is a uh, is a chemical that has an active ingredient of uh, thiomethazam. It does best with thrips. So yeah, every uh, leaf that you turn upside down, you can spot one or two thrips. Yes, so we do have an infestation. So in this week's of uh, agrochem and fertilizer schedule, we're going to include something that has thiomethazam to deal with the thrips. So how are we doing here now? We're doing great actually. Uh, the first phase of uh, trellising is done. That's putting up uh, the pores, the, uh, the lines here where we're going to hang the, the belling twine. So we're gonna uh, trellis from down here. We put the belling twine then through the plant up to here, then the plant vines will follow through the belling twine. Yeah. Yeah. We said we had enough of the belling twine. Yes, we have we enough. I've seen it um, hanging that side. Yes. Okay. Because that's just like half of it that we have. So it should be more than enough. Okay, cool. Yes, sir. Yeah, we have some flowers here. Yeah. So how is the trellising going to work here? So there is this vine that goes this way. So we have to come and start from this wire down here, then follow it up like this, then up to, to the top part there. Yeah. The other issue with the trellising is the, we're gonna have to do it repeatedly because right now you can't trellis this guy. No. Ah, let's say you can't trellis this guy. No. You can only trellis these long ones. Yes. The ones which are grown a bit. And these are on, are on Voma Veg now. Yes. Flowering. Which is now. I'm wondering bad. whether we're gonna kill this kill, kill these ones. Let's kill them and uh, let it grow. Continue the veg state. Because if it starts focusing on flowering, doesn't it go. doesn't help us. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah, some vines are really, really pushed. Uh, as we need to trellis them really fast so that we do have it moving upwards. And like the way um, the leaves are now facing upwards uh, towards the light. But yeah, like this big guy here with the flowers on. So the next step here now is the trellising. We need to decide when we're going to do it. <laughs> I know the guys are busy with the onions now. Um, so the trellising is, we wanted to start immediately the done putting up the trellising poles and the lines. Yeah. So uh, because of other works like putting up uh, uh, the temporary roof, uh, we were supposed to come in here and start trellising uh, today. So. I'm looking at it as in tomorrow morning. Friday morning. Friday morning, yes, they come and start doing the trellising. Okay. Especially for the vines that have really, really pushed the, the vines. Then we also talked about the, weed, the weeding a bit. Yes. So 
having um, offloaded um, most of uh, the works, we're gonna uh, come through even with the ladies. The ladies actually have uh, good hands in terms of uh, uh, trellising and uh, uh, weeding. So we're gonna have a mixture of uh, the gents and the ladies to do the trellising and weeding here tomorrow. Okay, the weeds are not bad. The weeds are not bad. It's just Nikovicho Samo. We're thinking that every piece of moisture now doesn't need to come to this guy. No. It needs to come to the real guy the, and make him grow. The plant, yeah. Yeah. I've been to Vivi, the Pavagina. Kuli Akaka hinge, hinge, okay? Kaka Guidan Tambo. Then Kulinaka. A clip came in, okay? Okay, kagui la paso. Etam pari i branchi diap skanga gui mo mo. Kozi te po ya chokai. So change ni ne. Etan ke nangu chese de pari ak. Chese de pari ak. Uh huh. So chese ni mova in dambong soko. So mangi. <laughs> so what you do is you make sure you string it for more but it's making sure it's tight so that you have a man pack it up so we can book a vala up on my way on a car looking and a looking can at me no so that's all in apple oh you can get out to work uh-huh apple so Kalokina, what's my name? No, Kalokina. Kalokina, so singer Gwe Mopo. So, season color tight, much more zibira, much more pombe. On a monga, my pombe kira i foot, a cascana guire mush. Season color tight. So, it also gives plan to room Mr. Bwanji. Yeah. Yo kula mshe mshe ili free izamba kukula. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. my tips monga mwe didi ya kumwamba kamba toke ibe nda because ili be clamp. Izambo ikonka nizana na ndi ambo so chape. Okay. Mwe wanate? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we are done with uh, uh, the trellising. That's putting up the lines and uh, guiding the plant. So the next step is uh, putting clips, uh, trellising clips, we call them trellising clips. So uh, with those clips, they'll guide the plant in which direction to go. But before that, the, the team has uh, uh, moved into action as well uh, to do the weeding. So as you can see, weeds are being removed. So fast forward a couple of days, weeks, and we then had all the trellising poles up and the trellising could begin. The guys kept getting disturbed because at the same time as they're working here, they also have to take care of the onions and the onion harvest is in full swing. So every couple of days, whatever it is, but anyway, they're back here now and the trellising is in full swing as you can see here. Speaking of um, Amazon tools, you know me, I like a bit of Amazon. There's these little plastic clips um, in this thing that we, we also buy from Amazon, quite reasonably priced as well. And they help us with holding up the actual plant itself. They're actually trellising clips. So they help us with holding up the plant. And here she is now, she's actually tying the rope. She's tied the rope to the base of the, the thing, and then she's basically using it to move that. Trellising is really important because at some point when the crop is full of fruits, it gets quite heavy. So you have to tie it. As you can see, our people have got quite a lot of skill because they've been doing this for a while. It's one of the 
job requirements and the job trainings that is done so they can do it quite easily so if trellising isn't done well then you get a challenge with your with the actual plants falling down and getting diseased and all sorts of other misery and wailing and gnashing of teeth Sometimes when I'm trying to share on the video what we're doing, it's quite difficult because you don't want to get too close to a person, invade their personal space, and then you also, they're, they're doing their job, you know. How would you like it if some boss with a camera came into your job workplace and started showing people what you're doing and talking around you, whatever it is. Ah, anyway, these things, yeah, I keep pushing. So, not getting too close to her to show too much detail but I think you've basically got the idea generally of what's going on. She's about to do the tying thing now, tying of that next rope. Am I like a football commentator? Commentating on the action as it's happening. There it is, she's tied it now and uh, she's advancing towards the center circle and she's passing the ball to the winger on the left. It comes back into the center circle and it comes back. The defender tries to hold on, tries to, but she's advancing towards the keeper. As she advances towards the keeper, she is now going to score. A beautiful shot. You know what I've just realized? That I haven't talked about the irrigation system. Am I taking you all for granted that at this stage you know how we use drip irrigation to deliver water exactly to where it needs to be? Hmm, interesting. Let's have a quick look at the irrigation system. So here it is, our irrigation system. We use poly pipes. Poly pipes, this would be a 40 millimeter and the poly pipe is coming. We are going to follow it, follow it, follow it. And then we get to what we call a T. What's in Zambia they might refer to as a T join. T join has got a gate valve and another T join on it and all of this together makes what we in our language call a bypass so the bypass will be will allow us to be able to water from here where this end cap is one two three four five six beds all at the same time when we switch on uh this series this gate valve this gate valve here and then from there, they get into the main uh, submain, I think. Yeah, this is the technical terms. So from this submain, we have drilled our drill, drip, drip tips, and there's a, the usual drip uh, valve. This one is the one with the a, a drip valve here, not the straight connector. And it goes into the, poly, the, the drip tape. And the drip tapes are one on each line. Because remember, we've planted two, two here. Eh? The way I'm saying, remember, like I mentioned it before. Okay, let's pretend that I mentioned it before. So we've planted uh, two, two, and there's in a diagonal pattern, one, two, one, two, at about 40 centimeters. I think we spoke about that in the other video. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I am vindified, justified vindicated i think i just made up a word all right so here's our plants planted diagonally and each of them is getting the drippy uh, thing going on interesting thing about drip though something not everyone tells you it is better to have the drip tape with the holes the emitters the emitters on top you get less clogging so here is your drip emitter here i'm gonna get a lot of questions about drip tape Okay, there's a lot of videos on YouTube about drip tape and you shall be able to click on those here. Here our main focus is on the cucumber that is all growing so nicely in here. 
the life of a YouTuber. I'm going to have to shoot this ending again because I'm not sure if the footage that I shot of the previous outros was actually there. So let's get started. Three, two, one. So there you have it. Um, a second update as we've brought you up to speed over the last 10 weeks as we continue to share how we actually grow our cucumber crops here at Mondo Farms Winterthorn on the outskirts of Chongwe. We've talked about how we sowed the seeds, looked at a couple of adventures that happened there. We've talked about issues that we had with acidity of the soil and how we handled that. And we've taken a very detailed look at trellising why we do trellising for crops like cucumbers and other things that need to be held up like this. And by the time we come for another update, we shall be harvesting. The great thing about cucumbers and other fruiting vegetables is that you don't just harvest once like you do with cauliflower, broccoli and cabbage and all of that stuff. You keep harvesting. You keep harvesting for sometimes two to three, four months sometimes. And that really makes a difference on your bank balance. We're still planting more cucumbers and maybe by the time you come back, we'll be talking about the next crop that we're planting when we get some rains, uh, which will be the successor crop to this one. We've already bought the seeds. It is a hybrid from Starcares called Mondego and we're really looking forward to seeing how that grows. My name is Chisha Folotia. Always grateful to have your support and have you guys choosing to click on our videos here on YouTube. Um, it's been amazing the response that we get, all sorts of um, comments and questions, and as well as all sorts of respect that people give us for the little bit of farming skills that we've managed to get over the last couple of uh, years. Subscribing is easy. You just press the subscribe button. Then you press the bell icon to be given a notification when a new video comes, which is run about every seven to 10 days or so, depending on how busy we are and what kind of interesting stories we needed to share. You can also press the thumbs up button if you like the video, which also helps us with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, what a lot of people like to do with YouTube videos is to share them. They share them with other people with similar interests, maybe part members of a farming group on our WhatsApp group or other family members that are into this farming thing. Sometimes people also use these videos to teach their farm workers um, out of the farm something that they may have noticed in one of the, in one of the videos. I know I've learned a lot from videos that have been shared with me here and there. I gotta go now. I'm hungry. I've been here the whole day, uh, walking around the farm, shooting videos, and I didn't even have lunch, and I'm going to have lunch stroke dinner, or whatever. <laughs> I'll see you soon on the Mondo Farms channel. Shalai Nipo, bye-bye.